Hello, this is John Miares from the USDA NAS Great Lakes Regional Field Office in East Lansing, Michigan. In this presentation, we are going to discuss how to complete Section A of the Production Practices Report. When collecting data for ARMS Phase 2, efforts are concentrated on collecting information from a single field. In Section A, we first must record the total acres of the target commodity and the total number of fields planted to the target commodity for the current year. Once this is complete, a list is made to identify all of the fields planted to the target crop, and then a procedure is used to randomly select one of those fields from all the operations fields to be the focus for this survey. Field level samples supply the specific details needed for the economic and chemical use analysis for that particular field which is then used to represent other fields just like it. Randomness is essential to making accurate estimates for the whole target commodity enterprise from just that one selected field. Once the field is selected, most questions in the questionnaire refer to only this field. Focusing on the individual questions in section A, item 1 asks you to record the total planted acres of the target crop. You want to be sure to probe to include any acres that might have been abandoned or destroyed, used as cover crops, grazed off, cut for forage, replanted to a different crop, or harvested for grain as initially intended. The only thing you would want to exclude would be target crop acres on land that is rented to another operator, which would be consistent with what we do on most other NAS surveys. But simply put, if it went in the ground, you want to write it down. Be sure to record all acres to the nearest tenth. There is no need to distinguish between organic and conventional crops. If no acres were planted, you want to review the screening survey information form and make good notes and then go to the conclusion on the back page. In item 2, you need to collect the total number of fields planted to the target crop. The total number of fields is used to expand field level data collected on the questionnaire. So it is absolutely essential that you do not skip this question, rush through this question, or accept vague estimates for this question. It is absolutely essential that this question be enumerated correctly as all fields must be accounted for to ensure that the data collected for the selected field are going to be correctly expanded for. In question three, you are to create a list of all the fields planted to the target crop according to any identifying name and number used to uniquely describe each target crop field. Some ways that could be used to identify each field could be through describing its location, the landlord's name, the previous owner's name, or the number of acres. As a general rule, Fields can be listed in any order using any description that is meaningful to the respondent. The field selection grid or the back of the kit envelope can be used to draw out and identify fields. Be sure to not skip any lines in item 3. If there are more than 18 fields planted to the target crop, list only the first 18 fields closest to the operator's permanent residence. However, in question 2, where you are asked the total number of fields, that is allowed to be more than 18. Randomness of field selection is another essential element in making accurate estimates for the whole target commodity enterprise from just one selected target commodity field. Enumerators must not allow the operators to select the field for the interview they may bias the estimate by choosing their best fields or the ones they consider average. This would mean the results would not represent all fields of the target commodity grown for the current year crop. Now let's look at an example of how we can use the random number table to select a particular field of study for this survey. Suppose an operator gives you the names of six fields and you list them all in item three. On the random number label, we would then circle the pair of numbers associated with the last number field in item 3. In this case, because we're assuming there are 6 total fields, you will circle the 6 and the 2. Once this is complete, 
you will enter the randomly selected field number in the appropriate box and then enter the number of acres planted to the target crop in that field in item 5. In this particular example, since we are assuming that there are six total fields planted to the target crop, whichever field is listed as field 2 from the previous page becomes the selected field, and the number 2 is entered as the field number in the box. If there were 13 fields planted to the target crop, you would circle the pair of numbers that would include the 13 and the 9, which would make the selected field the ninth field listed on the previous page. If there were more than 18 fields, say 27 fields, we would treat the situation as though there were only 18 fields, and circle the 18 and the 6, making the sixth field listed on the previous page the selected field. Of course, if there's only one field planted to the target crop, then that field automatically becomes the selected field. Once selected, it may be helpful to circle the randomly selected field in the item 3 listing. Be sure to tell the respondent which target commodity field was selected and be certain that both of you can identify that field. For the remainder of the interview, the respondent must be able to focus on the selected field and provide you with information for only that field. For the 2020 crop year, special instructions were developed for random field selection that do not involve using a random number table. Because enumeration for the 2020 survey is being conducted by telephone, procedures for randomly selecting the field needed to be simplified. Instead of selecting a field based on a random number table, the field will be randomly assigned based on either one of eight possible directions, possibly one of the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, or west, or one of the four intercardinal directions, northeast, southeast, northwest, or southwest, indicated on the barcode label on either the front of the questionnaire or the kit envelope. The idea is for the operator to identify the location of all the planted fields in the operation then select the field that is going to be the most geographically extreme in the direction indicated on the label. For example, if the label said north, we would want to identify the northernmost field planted to the target crop in the operation, and that would be our selected field. If the direction indicated on the label was southwest, then we would want to identify the most southwesterly field planted to the target crop on the operation, and that would be our selected field. Of course, if there is only one field, then that field becomes the selected field automatically as before. As a result of this new methodology, it isn't as critical that we list all of the fields out on the paper questionnaire, provided we can still account for the total number of fields in question one and the total acres planted to the target crop in question two and then identify the location of the field to be selected based on the direction indicated on the label. Now one thing that may be of help is that if the operator was also selected for the soybean objective yield program in Indiana or Ohio and that field had to already be identified by the operator and the enumerator working together over the phone as part of completing the form A of the objective yield survey, then that field may be substituted in place of the field indicated by the direction on the label. This is partly done because the operator has already worked with the enumerator to identify that field over the phone, and the enumerator should already be familiar with the location of that field. This will also alleviate burden on the respondent who had to spend time identifying all the fields for the objective yield form A earlier in the year. This substitution is not required but it is an option available to the enumerator during data collection for those operators that are in both the Objective Yield Program and ARMS2. All you will have to do to substitute the Objective Yield field is enter a 1 in the OY field substituted box on page 3 to indicate that the selected field for ARMS2 is the same field as was selected for OY. Regardless as to how that is done, it will still be critical that we account for the total number of fields and the total acres planted to make sure that we can properly expand chemical use and fertilizer application for the entire operation.